I've been hand rolling my own TypeSafe APIs since TypeScript got map types. However, you don't need to do that anymore because now we have DRPC. And in this tutorial, we will look at what it means to have a TypeSafe API and how you can implement it using TRPC. So let's go. Now we have a full stack Node.js React application. And if you are curious, we have a lesson dedicated to this particular template. And I will leave a link to that in the video description, but you don't have to watch that in order to understand what we are going to cover in this tutorial. All that is required is that you have an API file where you will be creating your express API. And then we have a front end application that's going to be invoking the API. And this can be any framework. We're just using React because that is what is set up in the template. Let's jump into the API file and create a simple API endpoint called slash hello that will return a simple payload that contains a message property containing the text hi fam. Now let's invoke this API from the front end. We create a simple state variable that will be used to store the response data. And then we have a utility function called handle load that will make the API call using fetch, parse it as JSON, and then load it into the data object. Our UI is going to be pretty simple as our main focus here is to see the interaction between the client and the server. The UI consists of a simple button that is wired to this handle load function. And then if the data is present, we will display that in a simple HTML pre tag. If you jump to the UI in action, you can see that we have the button displaying right now. And if we click it, the API request is made, the data comes through, and then it is displayed within the UI. So it's not particularly hard to create a very simple API endpoint and then invoke it from the front end. However, there is no strong contract currently between the front end and the back end. And it's pretty much held together with sticky tape, which makes it very easy to make silly mistakes. So let's demonstrate that. For example, if you were to refactor the payload message property to be the text property, no error will be pointed out within our UI and it will still think that it should contain the message property. And now within our UI, when we click the button, we get a very broken UI. So let's take a look at how TRPC helps us create these strong contracts between the server and the client. The simplest way to get started with TRPC is to install the two packages. One TRPC slash server, which is for the server side code, and then another TRPC client, which is for the client side code. We will use the TRPC server package to rewrite our server side code. This time our API router will actually be an instance of trpc.router and then for the individual queries, we will use dot query provided a string which will become a part of the API endpoint URL and then a simple resolve function which will take in a request and then return a response object and here we are returning a simple response that contains the text hi fam. Also notice that the resolve function is async, which means that if you need to make an external API or a database request, it's going to be quite easy for you to do with TRPC. Now, a great thing about the TRPC router is that it's going to infer the type of the returned object based on all of the chained calls. For example, this call to query will automatically be inferred as a query on the API router. This means that we can get all the type information for TypeScript and store it in a type alias called API router by simply using type of on the API router object. Now this creates a TRPC router, which is actually completely platform agnostic, but we need an Express.js router. So we bring in TRPC Express from the server adopters Express package and then use that to create a simple Express middleware passing in our API router. And that's it for the server side code. Now for the client side code, we will bring in the create trpc client function from the trpc client package. And then we will bring in the type for the API router, which we derived from the API router object. Notice that we are using a type import, which only imports the type information and doesn't actually create a runtime dependency onto our API file. That is, we're not actually runtime importing the API source code into our front end application. Now we use the create trpc client function and this API router to create our client. The only thing we need to provide over here is a URL endpoint where our API is going to be hosted and it's going to be hosted at the same URL where this front end is going to be present just at slash API. And now we can use this client object to make type safe queries to our server. For example, we can query the hello endpoint and access its response.txt. And it's type safe because we provided the API router type when we created this client, which means that if you make a typo in the query, we get a nice compile time error. We also get a nice autocomplete. And the same is true when we try to access the payload information, we get nice compile time errors as well as autocomplete. And of course, with the server and the client in place, our application works as expected. Now going back to the key point that we want to focus over here, which is type safety, because the client side types are derived from the server side code, if we refactor something within the server side code, 
TypeScript will automatically pick up the changes that need to be done for the client side code as well. I'll wrap things up there. As always, you can find the final code for this tutorial as well as other tutorials for free over on GitHub. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next one.